Welcome to Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. This day with a podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com and Chugwater Chili, the gourmet spice of Western life. Get 20% off your purchase by using Chugwater Don at checkout and check out their yummy green chili seasoning. Cold winds. The cold is going to completely dominate not only here, but everywhere. In fact, across North America, it's really hard to tell you where to go to find it warm somewhere as cold is overspreading the nation and will through the weekend. So Canadian air is going to completely dominate the weather pattern. We have an Arctic surge that's going to bring light snow accumulations to the plains more in the high country. Now this is by no means a big storm, but when you take Arctic air and you put down just an inch or two of snow, that snow that falls when it gets compacted makes it really, really icy. This is one of these situations where just a little bit of snow combined with a lot of cold can make for some hazardous travel. We'll show you where to watch out for that. Sub-zero temperatures Thursday night in many areas of the Intermountain West. Thursday night gonna be one of the colder nights of the season. So far for many areas, especially if we get a little bit of light snow. Now temperatures will begin to moderate. There's a pattern change that develops Sunday into early next week that will lead to moderating temperatures. It doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna get real warm, but we'll see temperatures get back to average at least. For Thanksgiving week, I know a lot of folks have questions, but we're not there yet. Not ready yet to talk about Thanksgiving weather. And the reason I say that is, to be honest, we're just not sure yet. There's a lot of different scenarios because we're going through a major weather pattern change from where we are now to Sunday into Monday. As the pattern readjusts, we've got some things to sort out before we can talk about that Thanksgiving weather, because I know a lot of you are gonna be traveling and wondering what's gonna go on. Now, need another couple of days before we can be there for that. Now, yesterday I showed you this image from a webcam up at the wet Wyoming High Country Lodge in the Northern Bighorn Mountains. This was yesterday morning at about the same time I did the podcast. And for the same time today, well, 17 inches reported, and you can see the change. If you look at the fence, see that buck and rail fence? See how much the snow is piled up? There is a report from the High Country Lodge in the Bighorns of 17 inches of new snow. And as you can see, still snowing. This type of pattern is really, really good for Wyoming's northern mountains to get a lot of snow and there's more coming. And this is why. The satellite image shows this next Arctic front. You see these clouds right here? This is the Arctic surge that's coming. It's gonna be moving into Montana here later today. We've got a big low up here in the western part of the Gulf of Alaska, which is building a big high here, which is causing the big dip in the jet stream here, opening that door to Canadian air. And there it is, there's that low off the coast. There's this area of Arctic air and that little low there. And this is the system in the upper plains. It's been producing a lot of winter weather here over the last 24 hours, even down into parts of Oklahoma, North Texas, getting some snow and some very cold temperatures. This is by tomorrow morning. Notice the amplification of this big ridge over Alaska and the eastern areas of the Pacific. This is just opening the door there to some very, very cold Canadian air into the nation. And what you have is a pocket of really cold air right there that's kind of where you want to look to see where that really cold air is. And so by tomorrow morning, the cold air is really going to be advancing. So once we get on into tomorrow night, into Thursday morning, that cold air begins to make its move. And then by Friday, it's getting well entrenched and we're seeing the cold air, the leading edge of it right here by then, going all the way down to the Gulf Coast, going all the way down into northern areas of Mexico, all the way into the desert southwest as well. And cold air backing its way in over the Sierras into California, making California windy and cold. As that cold air comes in, it's gonna get more entrenched into areas in the central and the east. And look at these temperature anomalies by Friday afternoon. Coast to coast, it's cold. It's cold in Mexico, it's cold everywhere. So bundle up. This is one of these situations where you can hop on a plane and find a warm spot. Precipitation, now this is through Friday evening, early evening Friday. You can see it doesn't look like much, but notice where the green and the gray is here. It's right along and just east of the divide. This is where you're gonna get the Northwest flow into the mountains. Northwest flow is very good to make it snow in the central mountains of Colorado and northern, uh, southern Wyoming. 
Colorado's North Central Mountains and Wyoming Southern Mountains. Look at that snow there in the Bighorns and the Beartooths. Just like I just showed you in that webcam image, the angle of attack when these Arctic fronts come in from the Northwest, that's really good for those mountain ranges. So what ends up happening is you get deceived by the amount of snow that can actually fall. The water content may not be great, but the inches pile up. Same here for the northern side of the Bighorn Mountains. That angle of attack, the wind direction aloft, really, really important. But also notice there's a lot of green here across Wyoming, Montana, parts of northern Colorado. That's going to be just enough snow falling on the plains late tomorrow through Thursday night for small accumulations like one to three inches worth enough to make it really, really icy. And there you can see where the snow is going to fall with this Arctic surge coming on in. These are temperatures forecasted by 5 a.m. Friday. So you can see the gray. Anywhere you see gray, it's sub-zero. Anywhere you see purple, you're talking single digits. So the cold is going to be very pervasive across the country. Temperatures dropping down to the lower 30s across areas of central and western areas of Texas as well. Now by Sunday, notice the trough is more into the Great Lakes, so the cold is going to get directed there, into New England, into the Mid-Atlantic. Those areas are going to get cold. Notice where the air is coming from by Sunday into Monday. It's from the Pacific. So it's can Canadian air through Saturday. Pacific air starts to move in Sunday and Monday, and that's going to moderate our temperatures and conditions. Long term, you can see this is by next Tuesday, the temperature anomaly. The cold is going to stick in the south and the east, but we aren't as cold here. It's still not really warm, but it's warmer than it is right now. The eastern Pacific Oscillation, look how far off the charts it is. It's not even on the graph. It's so negative, and that's because of the really cold air that we have here going now. But notice how the Eastern Pacific Oscillation rapidly goes into a positive phase here by this weekend into early next week. That's why we have this pattern change. As the Pacific pattern changes, so does the weather here in the West. And so what will happen is we are going to get a warm-up. But notice what happens if you follow the green line, which is the average of the all the modeling of the long term here with the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, it starts to get back, well, towards negative and then just stays, well, near, let's say, a neutral phase of the pattern. So that means the weather pattern changes, but it does not necessarily go into a prolonged warm spell, maybe a short one. And if we look at this same oscillation forecast through December 30th, that's right, this goes all the way out to 45 days, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. But notice what it does is the average of the models is taking it back to near zero or a little bit below as we get into December. So that's a cold signal. That's a snow signal. Another cold snow signal is the Arctic Oscillation, which shows it going to its negative phase as we get into mid to late next week and into early December. So those are long-term phases that are continuing to show us cold signals. Have yourself a good Tuesday. Stay warm. See you.